Okay, hi guys. So, uh, kind of a continuation, finally, um, from the last video uh, that I did that kind of looked at uh, what your MRI scans will show you in terms of uh, the mechanics of what's going on um, if you've got kind of persistent lower back pain and happen to have uh, lower back uh, or lower lumbar disc bulges, I should say. So, a little bit of a refreshment. Um, so, obviously, uh, on the left here, we've got the kind of healthier looking spine here. Everything looks in order. And on the right here, we've got the one that's got the bulges. You can see the, the dark discolorations, it's lost height. And obviously with the two sort of bulges just starting to pinch on the spinal nerve here, which is going to obviously cause you pain. Also, um, you know, very likely going to give you that kind of sadic pain, that kind of pain that runs down your legs into your calf or numbness in your toes. So I like to look at things from a mechanical point of view. So, you know, if we know these discs here are reasonably healthy and these ones here are not, I like to look at it from the point of view that, you know, it isn't like it's just fate has heaped upon you a weak spine. Um, it's just that, you know, everything else is fine. It's just that these two discs here, in this example, are basically more worn out than the discs are um, above. So we know that these two discs here, um, I've done a lot more war work during their lifetime than they should have. Um, so what we need to do, <clears throat> you know, if, if you've got this sort of problem, you've got these discs bulging this lumbar area and these discs are more worn out, uh, we need to work out what movement habits that you've got which would have caused that. There's a couple of reasons. One, obviously, long term, you know, if we know these, um, you know, these discs are worn out, we basically want to preserve what's left of them. Um, so we don't obviously don't wear them out anymore. Uh, <clears throat> and number two is if the, you let them settle down um, by taking away the movements and habits that aggravate them, these bulges or herniations that you've got here will eventually um, gristle and start to harden and eventually the body can actually start to nibble away at them and actually start to take some of that pressure off the spinal column, but only you know the spinal nerve, sorry. But only, that only happens if um, you take away the movements and habits that are trying to recreate and make these herniations even worse. So the way I like to look at it is, you know, these discs are worn out. They've basically done all their work in their life, so let's put them into early retirement. Let's get everything else around them um, to start moving a bit better so they haven't got to do so much of the workload, and let's spare what we've got left. Um, and, you know, so that obviously lasts you the rest of your life and we get rid of the back pain at the same time. <clears throat> so with that in mind, what are the sort of movements that would cause this sort of injury and make it worse and obviously stop you from healing up and get rid of your back pain? Well, I did this in the last video. Just a couple of things to think, you know, because people obviously think, um, you know, stretching, immediate relief in a little bit of pain and tightness is a good thing. But these stretches here, if you can look, you know, I'm rounded in my spine here and I'm rounded in my spine here. If we go back um, to previous screen, obviously, that means that these discs here are being flexed and rounded and being used. And obviously, we don't want that. So these sort of stretches here, although they may feel good at the time because they kind of relieve the muscles a little bit, are actually putting you at more danger of further disc damage, which obviously long term is no good. Uh, and it's also going to keep you in that kind of pain cycle of the back getting re-aggravated um, every few days or so um, and never being able to find a long term kind of relief from the pain, if you like. Okay, so just looking here, if we look at training, as we can see a very rounded deadlift. This is something you're going to see in the gym quite a lot with people when they train, especially with deadlifts. Um, it's having that very rounded spine and that kind of hip hinge as I started to come to the top. So that's going to have the same sort of effect because there's so much work and wear and tear going on in these discs. We want to avoid that. So in terms of things like deadlifts, um, you've got to be very careful <clears throat> because some people no matter what you do with them, we'll never be able to safely lift from the floor because they're always going to try and round that back out. Um, so one of the strategies you can do is obviously to lift from, a, you know, put blocks underneath the weights so you lift from a safer position um, or always just lift light. Because normally, really, you're not really going to find, you know, because I've got a massive weight here of 40 kilos on the bar, um, but, <clears throat> you know, you're not really going to find it the light weights or the warm-up sets. It's always going to be 
when people are fatigued, either you know at the end of a set or at the end of a few working sets, or if they're right on their limit mechanically for how much weight they can get off the floor, that form will always break down. You'll see that rounding in the back and that hitching as they get towards the top, um, and especially that hitching really bad, lots of pressure on that lower back. So obviously deadlift is a classic for you know people finishing themselves off in terms of, you know, sparking off a major back injury. Um, you know, if you think if you've been sat down all day and the back's already been rounded all day and then you come into the gym and you're trying to heft, you know, weight off the floor from a weakened position, um, obviously it's gonna, you're going to be asking for trouble. Okay, next one we'll look at is uh, squats. Yeah, so I've paused it there at the dangerous position. So <clears throat> there's a big thing uh, in fitness at the moment about trying to get people to squat, or used to be, um, ass to grass, which basically means getting your butt to almost touch the floor. Um, the trouble is with that, um, if if you're like me and have a kind of uh, Western European heritage, um, you're going to be more prone to a deeper hip socket, which basically means that when you squat super deep like this and trying to get your butt way below where your knees are, um, doesn't matter what flexibility drills that you do, what's actually happening in your hip here is you're actually running out of space. So the top part of your femur, um, your leg bone here, is actually hitting the top part of your hip. <coughs> and it's kind of bringing you around into this kind of rounded back shape. And obviously that rounded back shape is where those L4, L5, S1 kind of area is, which were those discs that are very, um, you know, very common to blow out. So you can imagine all that strain here times multiplied by the amount of weight you've got on uh, the bar and then trying to get back out the hole from here one of the first things you've got to do is you've got to flex on those vertebrae there try and get them straight obviously put a lot of pressure on them and then try and get yourself back up um, and to you know up to the top to finish off the squat okay so moving on from there here we're looking at uh, you know another common one obviously how you bend down to pick things up so obviously, first of all, it's a very backy, very lazy, very back dominant way versus another strategy here where I'm lunging a lot less strain on the back, um, you know, much, much safer. So that's one of the things you've got to take into consideration is all those little daily habits that you don't think about are going to use up that capacity in your back, um, you know, to be able to bend safely. And once you've used up that capacity, you really do start chewing up those discs and obviously, you know, you get that reoccurring back pain. So the key is to think about, you know, taking bending out of your movement repertoire, if you like, and replacing it. And that lunge um, that I just showed you is one of the, the strategies you can use for picking things off, 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 off the, off, up the floor. Um, obviously, one of the hardest things to do safely when you've got a bad back. So using that lunging strategy, you do a lot of the work in the in the knees and the hips, and obviously you can spare um, some of the capacity in the back. So that's obviously from the floor. And now let's look at something a little bit higher, say knee height. So here I'm trying to pick up the book again. Very lazy initially, very back dominant, very you know lots of work going on with the back. Versus, bam, there we go, doing a hip hinge. Shooting the hips back, using the glutes and using the hammies more, and the back is in a straighter position, um, doing a lot less of the work. So again, we're going to preserve what we've got left of those discs, and actually use the hips and the glutes um, to do the bulk of the work, which is, you know, what they're designed to do. Okay, so if we go back into the gym... One well, of the good ways to build, you know, a, a hip hinge is what we call a Romanian deadlift which is this starting from the top from a strong, strong position. Nice slow stretch on the way down, stretching out the hammies, loading up the glutes and the hips, and squeezing back through the glutes hard, contracting with the glutes. And trying to keep the back as straight as we can. There we go, so there's that position. See, roughly I've got my shoulders kind of in line with my hips. Um, head position could be a little bit better. I can maybe just drop the head a, slut, a touch. Um, but if you can see the weight here is going through the center of gravity, which is roughly the middle part of my foot. And for me to get down here safe without bending the back, I'm confidently and purposely pushing my butt, pushing my hips back away from me. So that then all the weight here is kind of loaded through the glutes and the hips. And as you stand back up again, again, it's getting that glute squeeze, squeezing the glutes forward to get itself back straight. And all the lower backs really had to do was just hold itself straight and not actually have to wait 
up and down, which is obviously far safer for those discs. So that's why I really love um, Romanian deadlifts or a variation of with kettlebells or with a bar. Great way to start building that hip hinge and give you a kind of alternative strategy um, as opposed to bending your lower back and chewing up what little you have left of those discs. Okay, so another big one for a lot of people obviously is, you know, a lot of people they sit down for a job, um, office space type work. So this is kind of a common position that most people are going to be in. If you can see the upper back here isn't supported by the chair, um, lower back slightly rounded. Um, and as the day goes on, your posture is going to get worse because obviously here, um, because you're not supported, you know, the back muscles are trying to hold you up. They're going to get tired as the day progresses. So eventually this posture will get worse. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you can also see here, I've actually got a bit of a hinge, a second hinge point here in my mid back. Um, so I tend to get very tight here. So when I roll on the balls in the front roller, sometimes I get a bit of a click and it kind of releases. Um, that's going to be very common. Anyone who sits down a lot, not only are you going to get a, you know, have disc damage, disc damage down here, you're also going to find there's a spot here where your upper body's doing. You know, it's kind of flexing its weight from that one point there. So that's something else to consider. That not only we might have a tight lower back, you're also probably going to be more prone to a tight upper back if you've got a sitting or a desk based tape job, or maybe you, you know you sit down a lot in a car or a truck to drive to work. Something else to bear in mind. So a better sitting position here. So what I've done here, I've come in closer with the chair. The weight of my upper body is now supported by the chair, so this upper back can relax a little bit. I've also got here, just for now, a little towel that I've rolled up into like a sausage shape, and just using that to give me a little bit of support in that lumbar uh, region there. So when I sit down, I'm not rounding out these discs and chewing them up anymore. I'm actually putting them into a slightly safer position, um, which is more comfortable long term, but obviously isn't going to obviously, you know, damage those discs either. So it's a far better position. If you can get like this, and if you look as well, my shoulders are slightly behind my hips, so all that weight's being carried by the chair, so the back muscles get a chance to have a bit of a breather if I'm trying to hold me up all the time. Okay, another one, little bonus one. Um, <clears throat> so one of my big aggravators uh, from my back, I noticed that, you know, sort of at the end of the weekend, like Sunday night, my back would always be really tight. And I couldn't work out why, because I don't really, I don't really train that much on a weekend. I might do some running or sprints, but I don't really do any heavy weights or any heavy bending or anything awkward. Um, and what it actually turned out to be was being sat on the couch. So I'd be sitting on this right hand side, and my partner row would be sat on the left, and I'd always be kind of slouching one way or the other, or kind of slouching towards her when we're watching TV. So I found out for me, you know, a couple of months ago, I'm actually better if I come off the couch, if I sit on the floor, again, have a little bit of lumbar support here with a cushion. Again, shoulders are slightly behind my hips, my back supported with the base of the couch. Um, and also for me, because um, my hamstrings tend to get a little bit tight, especially when I'm doing a lot of squats or weight training, if I sit my legs slightly apart here, and actually give myself a wee bit of a, a hamstring stretch at the same time. So this is something to bear in mind is that, um, you know, it's the, a lot of the stuff is the unconscious stuff that you don't realize, which is actually using up that capacity in your back and, and making it prone to damaging those discs and getting sore. So always think about all the times that you sit, you know, sitting on the couch, sitting on the, the office chair, in the car, on the toilet, everything that you do, you know, if you're, you're always slightly rounded in any of those times, that's going to chew your back up and make it more prone to pain. Okay, so that kind of gives you um, <clears throat> just some sort of basic ideas um, in terms of things that can aggravate your back. But that's the thing with the back pain is you've got to be aware that your back's always doing something. Uh, you know, even if you're lying down, if you're sitting, it's always doing something. So all everything that you do during the day can contribute to either your back being better or your back getting worse and getting tighter. So, you know, Thing to take away from this presentation, um, I guess, is just be aware that a big part of success with your back pain is being able to identify all the things that aggravate your back. You know, if I go back here, you know, sit on the couch, most people wouldn't really even really think about it. It comes in the day, you've got a you know, big day at work, you're tired, you're exhausted, you sit down, but if you're sat slightly bent or slightly buckled to one side, that's going to be something that's going to aggravate your back. 
Um, and it's going to use up that little bit of capacity you've got left at the end of the day to keep your back safe. It's going to be used up and you're actually doing it. You're just being set down. Um, so it's thinking about all these things which kind of seem stupid but you know they all add up um, in terms of whether your back's going to be healthy or whether it's going to be tight. So one of the big things you've got to do and why some a lot of programs fail um, with lower back rehab especially is they don't take into consideration all these little habits that you've got that need to be fixed up so that you can spare the back. So something to bear in mind, think about all the habits that you've got sitting, standing, moving, bending and see how you can improve them to make them more back sparing.